So in this video, we're going to take a look at how we might be able to write functions that utilize pointers. The general idea being that we could potentially alter values inside of a function and have that result also appear inside of our main by passing the address of the variable into the function rather than the value of the variable. And we typically refer to this as a pass by reference. We're taking a reference to something and passing it into the function rather than taking the value and passing it into the function. So that's the general idea of what we're looking at with this type of idea. So to start off, we're going to define our function and we're going to give that general just like picture of what's the return type and what variables does it receive. And for the example function in this uh, video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a function that adds one to a value. That's all it's going to do. So it's nice and simple. There's no return type and that's because we're actually going to change the value using the pointer rather than using a return. I'm going to call the function add one and it's going to take in a single pointer as a variable. And the way that this function is going to work is I'll say, okay, so I have a equals zero. And then what I could do is I could say add one and I could provide to it the address of a. And then what's gonna happen is inside of the actual function itself, when we declare it, we say, okay, we have add one, which takes in a pointer a. And what it's gonna do is it's gonna take that value a and it's going to add one to it. So what's happening here is we have a variable a and we're giving the function the address in memory of that variable a. What the function then does is it gets the value from that address, it adds one to it and stores it back at that variable address. So what we're doing is we're actually working directly with the memory. We're not working with the variable as a value. We're working with the memory that contains that variable. We're getting the value from that location of memory, we're changing it and then placing it back at that location of memory. That's what this function is doing. So that's the idea of a pass by reference or a pointer based print like that or a pointer based manipulation like this. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and print out that result and just see what happens. So I'll print out a remember a is just a normal integer. The way that we're getting the pointer is by setting the address of a into this function. So we can just print it as normal a like this. Let's take a look at this and see what happens. You see when I compile, everything is good to go, right? And then when I run this, I do get the value one as a result. You see that this started as zero and after this function happened, which adds one to that variable, we end up with the value one as a result. So you can see that that actually does work that we can you know, manipulate this value using the pointer rather than returning the value back. Now, all this might seem a little bit confusing. It's like, why would we actually want to do something like this? There's a lot of benefits to being able to manipulate pointers in this manner, right? So like one example that we could possibly have of this is if we wanted to swap two values. In order to swap two values, we would you know, typically have a function to do this because we might do like multiple swaps, like if we're doing like a sorting algorithm or something like that. And in those sorts of situations, it makes most sense to just swap the values directly in the function rather than returning back the swapped values and updating them inside of the list. So in these types of examples, it would make sense to pass in pointers to those values to allow us to swap them directly rather than having to do something else that doesn't involve the pointers. So that's just like one of many examples of where pointers could potentially be useful for you. Another thing that we can do, which is an important thing to note, is we can actually return pointers from a function as well. So not only can we change pointers, but we can also return pointers. So if we did want to return a value, we could say int star like this. And then what we could do is we could, you know, return that particular value. So I could return back a plus one like this, something like that, right? This would allow us to actually return back a pointer. And it probably becomes a little bit more clear if we do something like, um, you know, if I actually like store the results as an intermediary result or something like that, right? So if I take like star a equals star a plus one, and then I return back, you know, that value a like this, right? So that, that might make it a little bit more clear how this works, right? So since this is a pointer, we're returning back a pointer from this function. And then of course I want to change this to be a pointer as well. So we say it's star like that. 
So generally, this is just returning back a pointer from the function. So this is another thing that we can potentially do. And you're actually going to see a fair number of functions that return back pointers like this, or a fair number of functions as well that also manipulate pointers in the way that I showed previously. So this is something that you really want to be aware of because it's something that, that comes up fairly often, right? So in this sort of example, if we're returning back a pointer, what we could do is say, okay, you know, we'll make this actually... Well, okay, so what we'll do is we'll say like, um, you know, i equals zero, and then I'll set up a variable a, which is equal to a pointer to i, or it'd be the address, right? So the pointer to i like this, and then this would be int star like this. And then what we do is we pass in just a, because now a is a pointer, and we could get a result back. So I could say a equals add one a, and then we could print out that value. Now, in order to print out that value, now we would have to dereference it like this, because now that variable value is a pointer. So generally, what I find when we talk about C programming is that this idea of pointers tends to become a little bit complicated, right? There's a lot of different symbols being bounced around, but what you really need to do is break it down into pieces and just take it one step at a time, right? So you have to think about every single piece of this, right? This function takes in a pointer, and it returns a pointer. What it does is it takes the pointer that it was given, it finds its value, and it sets it equal to the value plus one. It then returns back that pointer, and that's the way that the function generally works. Now, in the main, what we have is a variable named i, which is equal to zero. We created another variable a that points to the address of i. We then set that value a equal to the result of adding one to it, and then we print out the value dereferenced like this. Let's just go ahead and compile this and see if we've got any mistakes in there, right? Looks like everything works. And as you can see, we do get a result that seems to function properly. So really, when you're looking at these pointers and addresses, it's just important to keep breaking down what exactly is happening, where the addresses are working in memory. If it helps, drawing a diagram might be a useful thing as well. Without any worries, you're going to see this concept many times if you keep watching C videos. So you're going to continue to see pointers used often. So it's going to be something that's going to become very clear to you as you continue to use them as well. So thank you so much for watching this video, and I'll see you in the next one.